Howdy. Welcome everyone to the 2021 uh, Iowa State Ride Engineering Competition. Sorry about that delay. We had some technical technical difficulties. Uh, I want to remind everybody that this is also being streamed live onto YouTube. Uh, and if you want the best viewing experience, you should check that out. If you Google Iowa State Theme Park Engineering Group, you should our website should pop up, and you can navigate to YouTube from there. I would like to thank Iowa State and the Ignite Showcase for hosting us in this entire uh, space for us to have a studio and be able to host such a large-scale competition on. And then there's also Ignite, which is an entire, uh, over a week of Iowa State students and undergraduates displaying what they can do. Uh, today, we have the Wright Engineering Competition. On the 18th, we're having a, uh, a student film festival for uh, students to submit their uh, videos, and you can, you're able to watch that alongside. On the 19th, students are showing their entrepreneurship and business ideas that they're coming up with the, for the past year. On the 20th, it's interdis interdisciplinary design uh, for student artists to show uh, their creativity and how they've uh, used this year to develop stuff. On the 21st is undergrad uh, an undergraduate research symposium for undergraduates to show what they've been working on for the past few years and uh, display such as that type of stuff. <clears throat> and then I'd also like to remind everyone uh, that if you have a ride, uh, if you are one of the six teams who have a physical ride model, please join the ride model Zoom so we can live stream that on later today starting at 9 a.m. is when the rides need to start moving. And uh, further ado, uh, we're, we're going to pivot and start look and rewatch the kickoff video so we remember all the little details of what we're doing. Hello everyone, and welcome to the first annual Ride Engineering Competition. Our planning committee within the Theme Park Engineering Group at Iowa State University has spent the past six months designing this competition to help students like you gain real life skills and become more qualified engineers and designers. The competition will culminate in a hybrid event where teams can be present virtually or in person socially distanced on April 16th and 17th, 2021. Here at Iowa State University's brand new Student Innovation Center. Registration opens today and is open until December 4th. Teams that register receive the full rulebook and additional documents and can start working immediately. There's a $20 fee per person to register for the competition. This does not include the final event. Non-registered students may not participate in the competition. Teams may register additional students to their team before December 4th. Registered teams will also be granted access to the Ride Engineering Competition team in Microsoft Teams. This will be the central hub for questions, updates, and news about the competition. This is the pilot year, so there are bound to be wrinkles to iron out. If you have any questions, suggestions, or problems, please contact the REC Planning Committee at MS Teams or by email. We want to build a strong connection with industry partners throughout this year and are actively growing our connections. We are excited to announce that teams this year will be granted access to the Advantis Risk Assessment software. We will be hosting webinars throughout the season and recording them for anyone who cannot attend at the specific time. Teams are invited to a webinar this upcoming Wednesday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Western by Advantis CEO, Philip Guerin. The registration is available on the Microsoft team. The next session will be on the functional safety management process from Linda Freeman of Rockwell Automation on Tuesday, November 3rd.
Now for a look at some of the technical aspects of this year's competition. Teams will have up to six months to design, analyze, and manufacture their ride. Teams will only consider the literal ride they are creating in terms of its riders, dynamics, and operation. Teams will first create and deliver a project charter to organize their team, then get to work developing the concept and risk assessment for their ride, along with starting a compliance analysis with the ASTM F2291 standard in conjunction with a provided ASTM adaptation document by the planning committee. After a preliminary design review on the risk assessment and concept, they will finish developing their ride systems have one final design review and spend the rest of the time completing their ride, their documentation, and presentation. Teams that register later this fall will have their deliverable schedule scaled accordingly. At the final event, teams will run their ride for a total of eight hours with riders replaced every hour on the hour. If something goes wrong with a ride, Teams are responsible for servicing their rides and returning them to operation. Teams will also present their process and final ride to our panel of industry judges. Teams can participate in the ride engineering competition event in person at Iowa State University or by virtually streaming their ride and team members. A vital skill as engineers is being thrifty. For your final ride design, you will record all the materials and labor that went into it and evaluate a bid price. This bid will be submitted blind. The team with the least expensive bid at the final competition event will keep their final score, but the team with the most expensive bid will receive a deduction of 100 points. The remaining teams will receive relative deductions based on their bid placement. There are 1,000 points up for grabs. However, only 750 points are expected for teams that perform at the level of a professional ride engineering team. Additional points can be earned in each section by going above and beyond. Scoring above 500 points in this competition will be a great achievement. We can't wait to see what you create in April. Good luck, future ride engineers. After checking out the kickoff video, and now we're reminded on how this whole event will work, I'm going to give the schedule for the day. Uh, for, for the morning, from 9 a.m. to 12 a.m., or 12 noon, uh, we're going to be conducting public interviews between me and uh, competition teams, and a couple other people uh, on our staff here will also be conducting interviews. And that will be publicly live streamed to the audience and the public and everybody. In the background, we will be having judging rooms one and two. Uh, we'll in the Zoom, we will have people moving judges around so we know where you're at. And then on the schedule, it'll state uh, which teams are going when. <coughs> and then on the other rooms, there is the student lounge. And so if you're not being interviewed, by a judge or by myself, uh, I'd recommend you stay in the student round so you're just available. And if you want to, you can also mingle with each other and talk a bit, exchange contact info, make some friends. And then in the judge lounge, uh, you'll be the purpose for you guys is you'll be watching for downtime forms. So if a ride breaks, they will have to submit a downtime form. That will be sent to you guys and you can judge accordingly. We have a rubric for that and you'll be able to get that done real quick. Uh, starting fr at from 12 to 1, it'll be just the ride model streams. We're going to be getting lunch over here too. So uh, during that, we'll be just showing uh, the six rides that our teams have made, uh, physical models of. Uh, after uh, lunch, we'll be having a bunch of pre-made videos that we created earlier this year. Uh, switching uh, back and forth between uh, model makers who have built their own rides, uh, built their own scale rides 
in their own houses, and as well as uh, industry videos from our sponsors and also ones that we have made ourselves about safety, system controls, and st stuff similar to that. During that same time, the afternoon section, we'll have judging rooms one and two, and we'll be shuffling people around so they can give their presentations about the ride, so teams can give their presentations on the rides. And I want to remind you guys again that this is being streamed on YouTube, and for the best viewing experience, I'd, you guys should go to the YouTube live stream. You'll be able to see me in audio, and you'll be able to see the videos and the interviews conducted nicely. And that is the general orientation. Now I want to thank our lovely judges who came out. We had a great turnout for judges this year with 23 people from within the ride industry uh, spending, volunteering their time and being with us. And so uh, just going through the list of judges uh, and what they do, uh, we have Linda Freeman, who's the industry manager at Rockwell Auto Automation, uh, Philip Gearing, who is the CEO of Advantis, uh, which is analysis design and validation. We have Gabe Russ, who's an electrical engineer from Irvine Andre Engineering. Matt Cal Calabresi, who's a mechanical design engineer from Skyline Attractions, LLC. We have Bob Vigneck, uh, who is a retired ride engineer and he is from uh, Walt Disney Imagineering in America. We have Mickey Haley, who's from UT Austin, and former uh, member from, firm, former employee of Walt Disney Imagineering. Chris Reynolds, who's a mechanical engineer for SNS Worldwide. Matt Schmoser, who is an engineer for Ford Motor Company, and he has an amazing uh, a side business which is print my ride and he has uh, it, if you want to you could also check out his Instagram which is print my ride and he has scale models of different rides we have Nicholas Losvich who's a video promotions coordinator and a mechanical design engineer for American coaster enthusiasts and LA pro point Kevin Russell who's the corporate director of maintenance and engineering at the Hershend fam Family Entertainment. Am Amanda Amado Said Castillo, who's a technical design lead in for Scenario. Jeff Savelski, Sav who's the president of Attraction Solutions LLC. Richard Sidley, who's the president of Safe Reliable Systems Inc. Reese Watcher, who's uh, a ride and attraction consulting engineer for DRA Safety. Jeff Pike, who's the president of Skyline Attractions LLC. Harrison Katz, who's an engineer at ATA Engineering. Ryan O'Neill, who's a mechanical and controls engineer at Burkett Engineering. John Byrne, who's a ride marketing engineer for Premier Rides, Inc. Michael Trios, who's a mechanical designer for TIT. Jake Butcher, who's a CAD technician for Birmingham and Taylor, and a former veteran mechanical engineer for Premier Rides, Inc. Brian Kozmak, who's an engineer for the Gravity Group. Robert Dank, who's a mechanical engineer for Dynamic Attractions. Timothy Lee, who's a mechatronics engineer for Dynamic Attractions. And so I can't thank you guys enough for volunteering your time and helping this event happen. You guys were pivotal in making this, well, first making this happen and also giving us credible feedback on what we need to do and truly gives the students an experience on what it is like to build, uh, design a ride at least. I wouldn't say build it, not going full, full scale quite yet. And then I'd also like to thank our sponsors who came out and <coughs> allowed for fund help fund this event. They, uh, sorry about that. <coughs> sorry. 
having some problems. Uh, such as Cyride, Rockwell Automation was also a massive partner for this. You guys uh, truly made this happen. And we also have some videos submitted from uh, our sponsors that we'd like to show. Do you have a sec? Okay. While well, we're pulling those up. But without this, without our sponsors, without our judges, this uh, with the combination of you guys coming out from the community and helping us you truly made this competition happen and I can't thank you guys enough Breakthrough with the enthrall system is that it allows a guest needing listening assistance or maybe multi-language assistance to see text captioning as an overlay to their normal vision. The text appears in the glasses, much like a fighter pilot's heads-up display, giving them the text information they need to enjoy the show or the ride. The field of view is unrestricted, and the text is illuminated, so the system works like works well in a circle vision theater or in a dark ride, for example. The guest desiring listening assistance enters a theater and is given enthrall glasses or tablets. A beaconing system provides for unique text depending on the guest location in the venue. Text can vary from lobby to pre-show to main show or scene to scene as in a dark ride. It gives people freedom, it gives people a choice. It gives you the ability to look wherever you want, not at a captioning device in a fixed location. You don't have to look away from the action. You feel part of the show. Instead of sitting off to the side to look in a particular location to see the, you know, the fixed facility captioning device. It's very easy to use. Um, the text, font size, and color are configurable. It's all in one, very inclusive. You feel part of the show. The possibilities of broadening the audience, of including the audience, of serving the audience is fantastic. The seed for Farlinks was planted in 1993 in Las Vegas, where we designed and implemented the 
pyrotechnic control system for the Buccaneer Bay battle at Treasure Island. A couple of weeks after the show opened, we got a call that the unthinkable had happened. Two actors had been injured by an unattended ignition of a pyrotechnic device beneath their feet. Fortunately, they recovered, but this shouldn't have happened. I got on a plane that day, and I spent over a week in Las Vegas trying to figure out how this had happened. It turned out that the local staff had made a pair of seemingly harmless modifications, accidentally introducing a pair of ground faults. They had created an un unintended electrical path through the earth that made it possible for the shot underneath of the actor's feet to go off when an intentionally commanded shot was uh, initiated far away. We realized that this could happen to anyone. It could even happen using a modern pyrotechnic control system implemented by the best operators, completely knowledgeable about how they should be implementing the system, following the best practices of the FPA standards. And it does happen. People in the pyrotechnic business many times employed to develop a wraparound control system that would add additional safeties that would augment the safeties in a commercially available pyrotechnic control system so that it could be used in close proximity to people. But we knew that those safeties should be implemented within the product itself so it would be safe out of the box. We set out to do that. We created a technical solution that eliminates the ground fault problem, eliminates the other faults that can be introduced by miswiring at the time that the system is set up. And at the same time, we joined the NFPA Technical Committee on Special Effects so that we could influence the wording of the standard to make it, uh, it require the sorts of things that would keep the system safe from the beginning. The breakthrough with the FireLink system is that it required changing the NFPA standard, allowing us to bring to market a system that solves those safety issues. FireLinks is the only pyrotechnic control product to exceed these best practices that are now suggested by the NFPA. It's a result of a decades-long effort to both change the standards language and design a safer solution. FireLinks provides for fault checking, instantaneous electrical match continuity checks, which we trademark CrewSafe, patented wireless communication, and additional features that are not available on any other firing system. Our focus is always on safety for guests and those working in the entertainment industry, and FireLinks is a landmark step toward making a safer industry for all. Looking at the schedule, we're about mm, 14 minutes ahead right now. Talk a little bit fast. But we also realized that we haven't done host introductions because Charlie's not on camera quite yet. He's a little bit delayed today. But I'm Nathaniel Manser. I'm a freshman in mechanical engineering here at Iowa State. I grew up in Nebraska, and now I'm staying at Iowa for this college. <laughs> yeah, I'm a participant in TPEG, 
and also the Iowa State Sailing Club. How I got into TPEG was through <coughs> uh, the, what was it? the uh, club fairs. So basically Iowa State, every spring and fall, they will host a club fair where it's basically, it was completely virtual this year, but usually it's in person. Just walk around, check out all the displays, and clubs have pre-made videos, show off all their projects and stuff. And I checked that out uh, during the fall semester, and I saw uh, what they were doing and what they were planning to do with this right engineering competition. I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. I'll go check that out. And then we'll also introduce our co-host, Jack Smith. Hello, everyone. Uh, you haven't seen me yet. My name's Jack, as he just said. I am a sophomore in mechanical engineering, and I got into this club. It was kind of weird. I was just have I just was just scrolling through ro random roller coasters on Instagram one day, and all of a sudden I just see a post from Charlie, just like talking about his like experience at I think it was Maury's Piers, and at the bottom of it he just said like. Uh, and all this experience made me think about starting a club, and I was like, oh, that's my college. That I could join this. And then I'm here. So it was a weird ride, but mm -hmm. it all led here. Yeah. So somehow we all ended up here working on this ride engineering competition. And, Jack, you said you had some previous experience uh, working with uh, as an employee for a couple of theme parks, right? Yeah. I worked as a ride operator at Six Flags Great America. Mm -hmm. Uh I primarily worked at X Flight. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so it gave me a little bit of a background in the amusement industry. Yeah. Did you say, would you say, and that was mainly just operating the ride, getting people through? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Checking restraints, sending it, the trains, stuff like that. Mm hmm. And would you say, do you think you were always interested in roller coasters, or was it working at Six Flags where you're like, that's cool, I want to do at least a club for it for now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> My, I worked there for three years. My first year, I was not terribly interested. It was kind of just a job. Yeah. Uh, the second year, I really started like paying attention to it, and then I went to Cedar Point that year too, and that really gave me more of a love for roller coasters in this mm -hmm. industry. And so that by my third year, I was really interested. The third year just kept escalating. Yeah, with pretty how much. You liked it. <laughs> yeah, <Really>? that's cool. <clears throat> and so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what other, th so you worked there. Yeah. Uh, what other theme parks have you visited, or what's your favorite, at least? Ah, uh, my favorite would still be Cedar Point. Cedar Point, really? I've been to a bunch of them, just kind of all around. Mm -hmm. I've been to Busch Gardens Tampa, um, Adventureland here in Iowa, yeah. which is a smaller park, but still got some decent rides. Oh. Uh, Worlds of Fun. I drove down to Dollywood this summer. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've been to a couple parts, not anything crazy, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you get into this industry, considering there's not that many parks out in Nebraska? Yeah, there are no parks in Nebraska, actually. <laughs> we have a slide on the playground. Oh. Uh, it was very much a thing of, I, it's something that I couldn't necessarily experience. I wasn't able to like go down to Six Flags or anything like that. But it was something where that is a cool concept. I, I'll watch YouTube videos and check out everything about just seeing how it works. The, the idea of just through lifting the roller coaster, you're able to give users this amazing experience. And then in 2018, the summer of 2018, I was able to actually go to Disneyland for the first time, uh. which is I'd say is a pretty good start. I might have been a bit spoiled. And the lines were short, and I was able to go on Space Mountain a couple of times. Uh, it was really eye-opening, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, that had to be good. Yeah. And uh, I can't sit in the first uh, seat. I'm a little bit too tall for that. Mm. But in general, going to Disneyland and checking all of that out, uh, I was able to go to Star Wars. I was the Star Wars section. Yeah, that that part looks nice. I haven't been there. You but haven't been there yet. No. I highly recommend to anybody who wants to check that out. Uh, <laughs> a free advertisement for Disney Light <laughs> right now. But other than that, that's that's mainly uh, where I go, where I came from, is just general interest going to Disneyland, which just piqued my interest of being like, you can build this, how, and 
when I came to Iowa State, uh, I was scrolling through the club list and went to Club Fest and such. And I'm like, oh, this is a cool concept. Yeah. I never thought of anything like that. And being exposed to this my freshman year has really been nice in being introduced to this community uh, through a uh, theme park engineering group here at Iowa State and also the theme park engineering discord and meeting with people and seeing their projects and stuff. <coughs> yeah. yeah. And what would you say, planning out this event, I've mainly been uh, working on the program and trying to make everything run smoothly. Uh, what did you do for this event mainly, Jack? Yeah, I did a lot of building the physical stuff. Mm -hmm. So this backdrop we have over here, mm -hmm. uh, I did a lot of work on that. I did a lot of work on the trophies, mm. getting those. The if you can see them, I don't know how well you can, yeah. but Bit we have a camera. yeah, we have a 3D printed model of uh, like 3D version of our logo, and then that is mounted onto a plaque. Yeah, and so. I did all the 3D printing, and then I ordered the Plex, and so I did a lot of stuff for that. Mm -hmm. And then I also did some stuff working on this desk, yeah. along with anything else I was randomly asked to do along the way. Yeah, a lot of, oh, we need to get this done. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 100%. And you also did a lot of work on the rubrics, too. I did some work on the rubrics, too, yeah. yes, for the grading. Yeah, and so making sure that this is a competition and not just showmanship, really, quite yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Somebody has to win. Eventually, yes. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the eight hours, uh, after all the rides are done, we'll make sure uh, to da tally up all the points out of 1,000 and see who wins. Yeah, I can't wait to see who does win. I can't wait to see some of these models and yeah. some of the designs that people have created. Yeah, nine, team t nine teams total uh, with, uh, I believe, five teams making in-person uh, physical models of their designs, uh, four teams being online only. We've offered this as a hybrid event of physical models and also uh, design, just to make sure that with COVID, we want to uh, play it safe and get as many people involved as possible. And by having that open to everybody of having physical 3D printed models or just general act real world problem models and uh, just online designs, we were able to just have something that's super COVID safe. And we're also uh, 10 feet apart, I'm vaccinated, and so we're staying safe over here at Iowa State, making sure uh, we're following COVID regulation accordingly. Yes, uh, and in the future we will we're not thinking of offering a contactless league. We want this competition to be a hands-on competition. We want to get you guys to come to Iowa, whether you like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> come to the uh, a state of corn and pig. Yeah. <laughs> but there is just nothing else like this in the, in, in the industry. Yeah. So we really want people to actually build these models. We understand that this year that was not possible for everyone, so that's why we offered it this year. 100%. But in the future, we would really like to get everyone building a model because that's where a lot of the learning comes from. Just the having the process between having a computer model and having a physical model that works, uh, we were able, you're able to go through the full design process improvement of come up with a, a problem, uh, find a solution, and reiterate on that multiple times till you have something that's a good product. And you, these ride models, uh, it'll take some troubleshooting, I'd assume, uh, for the people who built it earlier this year. Uh, <clears throat> and we're able to just go through the full engineering process and make sure that, and give students an outlet for, I wanna build something. Yeah, building stuff is always fun, yeah. especially <laughs> something you've never really done before. I don't think a lot of us have made a I working ride model of some sort. Yeah, I haven't made a roller coaster yet. Yeah, <laughs> so I think it's definitely a new experience for a lot of people, and yeah. I think that's why it's so beneficial. Mm -hmm. Just the exposure uh, to 
what it's like to do it. And we also, that's why we also tried to make, try to make it so that it's somewhat real world where you're trying to comply with safety standards and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, all of these models have complied with ASTM standards. Mm -hmm. and, and are judged accordingly so. Yes. Uh, we gotta make sure that our, our riders, which are the size of Starburst, <laughs> uh, stay safe yeah. and there's no injuries. We would not want any Starburst to be injured today. Well, yeah. <laughs> They're not actually Starbursts, but the unfortunately. Size of Starburst, yeah. at least. <laughs> 100%. And so the safety is extremely priority, especially in the ride injury in industry. Safety is important yeah, everywhere, at least. Uh, yeah, safety is important <laughs> everywhere, but specifically in the rides industry yeah. and amusement industry, safety is the utmost priority. Yep. And our responsibility as engineers is to create the best product possible while still being as safe as possible. Yeah. Within the range, the budget, and the requirements of what we're doing. <coughs> we yeah, have about. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? Oh, we have about two minutes before the live models go live, and so we want to make. So I want to remind everybody: join the ride model Zoom and make sure that uh, it's in frame, so then we can see it. And then starting at nine, we'll just have a 15-minute block of watching them go and seeing what they can do. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, it'll be uh, super fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a long live stream today, but we'll get through it. It will be long, and but. I and I hope judge, judges and students are, and participants are ready and pretty prepared for this. Yeah. We've been, doing We've been this. working on this for a while now. It's been everybody, yeah, between us creating this and also the students putting in the hours. Uh, I'm proud of you guys for what you've done. <laughs> I think we're trying to queue up the second zoom for the right okay. engineering model. Do we have all the